Good morning, Gemini, and welcome to your reading with Molly the Star Kid at Star Kid Ignited. This reading is a message for Gemini Sun, Moon, Rising, or North Node. Uh, make sure you check out your astrological chart so that you know what your North Node is, and you can watch those videos too. Um, this is being recorded for June, but any time that you find this message is the right time for you to receive it, Gemini. All my messages are timeless, um, so you may not be attracted to watch this in June, but then you will be attracted to watch it at the right time for you. So. Without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm going to go through your energy check-in. So I read, I channel your energy and just see what um, the divine most wants me to talk about or what's coming through the strongest in your energy. It might not apply for all Geminis, but it's going to apply to the ones that need to hear it. Um, and then we'll jump into your reading. So let's go. So Gemini, when I was tapping into your energy, I felt itchy, like immediately itchy, um, so uncomfortable, restless. Um, I got a fixated, obsessive energy. Gemini's your energy felt restless, fast, and super fixated to a point of almost mental obsession. I heard past relationships, so especially fixated on the role that you played and the mistakes you made, overthinking, replaying in your head. There's an energy of wanting something so badly that you feel entitled to it, yet resisting doing the deep emotional work required to sustain and grow a true heart-centered connection. So guys, obviously this might not apply for every single Gemini, but if it is something that you're needing help with or just a situation that has been coming up in your life where potentially relationships aren't going the way that you wanted them to go and you get really fixated on what went wrong or just needing to know the answer to the point where it's like oh I should have this why don't I um then yeah just keep listening and we'll dive into that more Gemini what is scaring you away from being in your heart is there a pattern that you can observe here of preferring to mentally overanalyze something rather than pausing and feeling in, into what you truly resonate with and making a decision from that. Rather than what you did wrong in the past, can you remember how what you did made the other person feel? So that's a way more um, getting into the feeling space when we're recalling something rather than just mentally fixating on it, um, allowing our heart to give us some wisdom to what you know, like um, our mind can always justify something like, no, we had a reason to say that we were hurt. Well, the heart might have a very different opinion. The heart might be saying, no, like you love this person. You wanted this. We didn't react the best way. And then it pushed further away from us. But our true heart's desire was we had this need and it wasn't being met. And, you know, we tried to communicate that and it didn't work. Um, so yeah, so just stick with this. So yeah, so again, remembering how did you make the other person feel and how did that feel? How did it feel in your body? Were you able to have your needs met by communicating openly and kindly? Or did anger, frustration, hurt or judgment get in the way and create more difficulty and separation? It is emotion and feeling that lead us into connection. They create bonds of trust, security, and closeness. And each person attempting to connect must be willing to be emotionally open and vulnerable with the other. It is through this risk, this trustful, that even more love, joy, and greater trust can be birthed into the connection as we feel held, seen, and accepted on an even deeper level. So this message is directly from your higher self, Gemini. Gemini, darling, we see you holding your heart back. Source knows the pure intentions and wishes of your heart, the soft-centered truth that others rarely glimpse, but you know oh so intimately. It is our wish for you to receive this divine connection you yearn for, and we must call your focus to games of the mind and ego, that when allowed to control your actions, actually repel this intimacy you truly seek. It is wise to observe and be discerning. However, the ego can quickly jump to our defense in times of vulnerability, believing that it must protect us. Often through judging and criticizing others, when really being in that vulnerable state is what's required to gain the closeness that we seek. If we can't, it's like, you know, like sharing your, your heart's, your heart's truth. And like, 
when we're that open and vulnerable, we have to accept that no matter what the person's response is, that we are loving deeply, we cherish love, we want really like passionate, deep love. And so we're willing to put ourselves out there. We're willing to be vulnerable and have that person throw it in our face potentially. But doing that, creating that trust, that vibration of like, I want this, I'm stepping up to the plate, I'm going to do it. Um, even if the first few people aren't able to reciprocate it correctly, you've created an energetic blueprint where you're now going to start coming closer to that desire and attracting more people who believe those things and who will show up for you in that way. Okay. When being in that vulnerable state is what's required to gain the closeness we seek. Be with yourself today, Gemini. And practice this raw emotional honesty while noticing when the mind jumps in with criticism and judgment. Practice not attaching to the mind's story and simply allowing feelings up to be felt and then released. We will stand by you the entire time sending love and celebrating your evolution and your courage. Awesome. So yeah, it's such a beautiful message coming through from your higher self for this month, Gemini. It's so important. Everybody needs to learn this lesson that, um, you know, if we really want true love and intimacy and passion um, and closeness and connection and trust and to feel like there is someone in this world who knows, who can see the deepest, like most intense, most beautiful, most scary parts of ourselves and just be with us and accept us. Um, but we have to do that for ourselves first. And why do we have to do that for ourselves first? Because like you can't talk about something that deeply, you know, like deeply hurt you as a child that you're trying to heal through and get over in a constructive way if you've never spoken to yourself about it and really gotten to know like why did it hurt me? What were the messages that I got? Was it real or was it true? Do I need to do some reparenting around that situation so that I'm not carrying this um, distorted belief that I've inherited maybe from a parent or a friend or a teacher or whatever it is. Um, because, you know, like talking about our trauma or talking about things that deeply moved us or hurt us or touched us even, um, it's a vulnerable place. And we need to be able to speak to ourselves and understand that portion, that part of ourselves so that when we do come into connection with other people and we're discussing, you know, these very precious, intimate, vulnerable parts of ourselves, no matter what that person's doing, we already know how to make ourselves feel loved, accepted. We understand the situation so that when somebody else either, you know, when we ask someone to meet us there, if they meet us there, it's this beautiful like transformation of trust and connection because we knew that they didn't have to honor that special thing, but they did. And now we're able to honor their thing even more as well because we feel loved and nurtured. But again, with that trust and that risk, uh, I said trustful, that risk that we're taking, not everybody has done that in a work. Not everybody can meet us in that way. And so if they don't, you also need to have the resilience, the love and the trust in self to be like, okay, you know what, like I'm taking this present back and I'm going to look after it myself and that, you know, and I'm going to make, um, maybe put up boundaries or I'm going to make decisions based on was my needs, were my needs met in that situation. Um, but yeah, just really needing to own that we need to give that love to ourselves first, that honesty, that um, acceptance before we're going to be comfortable to do it with others because otherwise like obviously the worst of situation with that is like hey look at this really like sensitive part of me that I love so much and I'm trying to talk to you about and someone is just like oh I don't get it like maybe that was your fault or like maybe this or that if you don't know how to like emotionally tend to yourself comfort yourself and accept those things um, and also um, not allow in anything that doesn't resonate with you for example, if you, you heard that and you didn't have those um, boundaries and self-soothing techniques and all of that, you might become extremely reactive and be like, how dare you? How dare you say that? Like, what about this, this and that? And um, then we're creating like, then your need isn't getting met. Your need wasn't met. It was, you know, met with resistance. And then because you rose to that level, you're now in an argument that was just unnecessary. Like you... Um, you as a person deserve to have that need be met at its core. Um, 
yeah so yeah so j all food for thought gemini let's jump into your reading i'll stop talking now <laughs> oh my god 10 minutes i'm sorry okay so what is the card for gemini today spirit okay well it looks like i was talking about it for a reason because we have vulnerability and it was all about being vulnerable um open your heart allow yourself to be tender so yeah everything we just spoke about gemini that um we must be vulnerable with ourselves before we can even dream of being vulnerable with someone else. Um, and even even when we're vulnerable with ourselves, it can still be really hard to accept someone else's um, love and care because like, it's such a sensitive thing for us. So make sure that you really are taking the time to be vulnerable with yourself and even if it's not um with a partner even if it's just with friends or people around you really practicing a bit more vulnerability and also noticing how people react to it so like if you're vulnerable and someone reacts aggressively then that might be a boundary that you put up that i no longer will enter into that realm of conversation with you because you've shown me that you don't have the skills or ability to meet my needs and to handle it and i'm not going to create um just you know a confused dialogue with someone when they don't really understand why why i'm doing this thing um but at the same in the same token like if someone is able to meet you and your vulnerability and really see see what you're trying to say and just be open to it and accepting and maybe give you some support not try to fix it um that's a truly special person and yeah okay so let's just Let's get into it a bit more, Gemini. So what are the energies around Gemini right now, Spirit? We have Knight of Ariel, trustworthy, understanding, devoted, and funny. There is so much more to accomplish. Make a detailed plan. Beings are uh, being watched over by someone kind. Okay. And then we have King of Raphael, warm, generous, honorable, and refined. Yes, it is safe to trust. The ability to accomplish many things at once. Follow your creative passions. So both cards are talking about accomplishing things. So you might be really, um, yeah, I think you're really motivated to get out of this energy. Like you've had enough. You don't want things to keep going the way that they've been going. Um, you want to be seen as your trustworthy, understanding, devoted, funny self. You want to be accepted for your warm, generous, and honorable nature. Um, you want to show yourself how emotionally refined that you can be because you know that you can be. Um, but yeah, I think what it also is saying here is that there's going to need, there's going to be some diligent work in the physical that's needed. It's not something you can do once and just forget about. Um, you're going to need to, you know, like put some discipline in here, get some Capricorn energy where it's like, okay, you know, like no matter what I'm doing this thing, I'm spending five minutes on this every day because I'm devoted to it. I know it's going to grow into something. Um, and whether that thing takes one year to grow or 20 years to grow, I'm starting it now. Um, yeah. And obviously reminding you that it is safe to trust that, you can accomplish so much more when your heart's open. When you, and when your heart's open, it doesn't mean that you're this like you know like sensitive, easily emotionally overthrown little baby or whatever you know whatever. Um, having your heart open means that you can really connect with people. You actually you feel what they're going through. You're able to really show up for people in ways that they might not even be showing up for themselves. Um, you're able to emanate this like emotionally responsible mature energy that so many people are attracted to because we don't have a lot of emotional responsibility these days like people just react and want to tear each other down at like the you know like at the smallest thing at any chance they get is what i was thinking and so i think you're really starting off on a journey to become this more emotionally um resilient loving um well boundaried person that knows when to be vulnerable and knows how to enter into those really emotionally intimately deep spaces and keep your cool and get your needs met and be able to really um yeah understand what that other person is trying to get through to you too because a part of being a king of Raphael, he's intuitive he's psychic he's 
able to differentiate between his feelings and someone else's and also relate to how they're feeling to be able to give them what they need, but also to put boundaries in place when they need to give it to themselves. Awesome. So the card that you have as well for what's going on right now is perspective. So this shows um, perspective is like the hanged man. So you're upside down, you're not able to move um, and you're needing to get a different um, perspective on things, obviously being, you know, suspended in the air. So things may not be going forward for you in this area as quickly as you want. There might be a lot of delays or literally just feeling like no matter what I do, things aren't moving forward. Um, but what Spirit is trying to tell you is that there's a better way. Pause for a reflection and insight and dare to be different. Dare to do things differently than what you've been told is expected of you. Um, dare to rip up the old paradigms and the old, you know, like social contracts and write your own. Like, what do you think? Um, how can vulnerability be a source of strength and power? And how do you... Um, how do you weave that into the person that you are, whether male or female? Um, yeah, and in what ways have you maybe been holding yourself back to just like keep the status quo? Because it does say dare to be different. The next card we had is the three of Ariel in reverse, which is do what you love, a time of great personal growth in your career or artistic endeavors, working with others in a cooperative manner. So this was in reverse so it feels like there's a blockage in this energy so you're feeling resistant to doing what it is that you truly love or you're feeling like things just don't work out in the physical um tell me more about gemini's energy with the three of ariel spirit what yeah okay yeah so I think something's going to be illuminated to you, Gemini, which is awesome because, you know, when we're stuck and we're trying to get a new perspective and we don't know what we're meant to figure out, like, thank goodness when the sun finally rises and we're given some of those answers and we can kind of start to see a bit better, like, where we went wrong or maybe where we thought something was something, but it wasn't quite that. And, you know, we can learn from those experiences because we have the sun. And so life is wonderful. Thrive through the power of positive thinking and inspiring success. And what I get from this is I don't think that you believe that if you do what you love that this will happen. I feel like, yeah, there's definitely a struggle here with going, um, going after a life purpose. It feels as if, let's see what else. Yeah, it feels like something's being illuminated where it actually is possible, but you just haven't really been believing in it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Because we have the Wheel of Fortune is coming in for you. So new beginnings, end of delays, a change in direction that offers happiness. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly. And a gift of passion, opportunity, and inspiration, the chance to do something amazing, a sense of wonder. Yeah, okay. Okay, I get it. Okay, yeah. So the three of Ariel I see as being in reverse because, you know, this... This fear of being vulnerable, this, um, oh, I can't think of the word, you know, like you would much prefer to, like lately your mind has been reacting. It is the, it sits in the driver's seat. The ego is, you know, like ready to jump in for you and defend you and like, you know, like really protect you in whatever way it needs to. Um, but that is just simply not working. It is taking you away from what it is that you love, what it is that you truly desire. And the sun coming in here is trying to show you that there's a better way of doing things, that constantly reacting and feeling like you need to protect yourself and like, you know, harm them worse than they harmed you kind of attitude is not leading you to success. It's not working. It's creating disharmony with others. And it's also just not true. Um, yeah, because with this card, it's showing you that, you know, once you're able to actually accept vulnerability as a strength and, you know, when you have those reactions, even if like, even if it slips out, like, you know, say like someone, you know, you're wearing your favorite shirt and someone, someone random is just like, oh, I hate that color. And you're like, you don't know anything about this color. <laughs> and then even being like, even if you, it slips out saying like, 
look, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I'm not having the best day. And I felt fun. I didn't really like it when you said that about me. And so I reacted, but I'm sorry. It's not your fault. You know, like I can understand that maybe you don't like this color and I don't need to take that personally. Thank you. Have a great day. It's, it's starting to embrace that side of you starting like <laughs> Gemini's are so, um, so mentally quick and witty and able to like bring things in and then bring in all this other information about it. So I think your ego will be very powerful at, you know, like making you feel protected and making that person question, um, you know, like saying something to you or whatever may have happened. But this is trying to show you that, you know, the will of fortune is in your favor when you are able to master this part of yourself rather than pushing people away. Um, you're going to receive just so much more good fortune, so many um, more blessings in your life when you have people to share it with and you're able to really allow yourself to be your full human self, like not this perfect little robot who goes to work and is always like, you know, I'm not saying that that's what you think, but you know what I mean? Like, you're a human, you're messy, you've got feelings, sometimes they're not always perfect, it's fine, like, just get into a state where you're more able to be vulnerable with yourself and others and not reacting. Okay, and this is bringing in a gift of passion, opportunity and inspiration, the chance to do something amazing and a sense of wonder. So yeah, I can see once you've had this illumination and like, you know, you've really put some action behind it, as your card said, like needing to diligently work toward this path. Um, the will of fortune is turning in your favor and you're going to be gifted more things that you're even more passionate about and excited to pursue. Alrighty. Do we have any last messages for Gemini before we jump into your extended on Patreon? Awesome. And so we have earth and ground and intuition and downloads. So, okay, well, the first message I got is if you're a masculine, you need earthing and grounding. Earthing and grounding can be like, you know, feel your heart, feel how fast your breath is, feel if your breath is long and slow and deep into your belly, or if it's just like, like kind of at the top of your lungs, um, feel just into your body, feel your physiology, feel, does it feel fast? Does it feel relaxed? Does it feel peaceful? Um, and then go and earth and ground, which means sit on the ground outside and take some really deep, big breaths. You can imagine, um, roots coming out from your root chakra. So just under your tailbone and going into the earth, like this big, beautiful, strong tree. Um, yeah, for some, yeah, so just um, because you're an air sign as well, like remember like trees aren't able to like flow in the wind because they're the strongest or they're the most resilient. It's because they've got the deepest roots that they're able to actually like be bent and flown around in the wind. So make sure that you're, you're creating really deep roots for yourself, really like nourishing strongholds and bonds with people around you and with yourself where you're feeling safe and planted and grounded and not like, you know, like you can say one thing and your whole world can just get like whisked away like um like a bouncing castle getting like thrown across um you know some school grounds or something. It's feeling like anchored and rooted and like whatever comes your way, you have the power and you have the strength and the awareness of yourself and the people around you to be able to go into that situation and get your needs met fairly and justly and with love. And if you're feminine, especially you're getting a lot of intuition, um, downloads. So you definitely, obviously both these cards can be taken for whether you're a feminine or a masculine. So definitely everyone should be earthing and grounding, but especially the masculines and especially for the feminine, um, Gemini's, realize that you're getting a lot of intuition, you're getting a lot of downloads, spirit is speaking to you. So make sure that you're quiet in that ego voice. Um, we can't really hear spirits whispers when it might tell us something. And then our ego says like a hundred other things and it gets drowned out and it's harder to sense like, what is my higher self speaking to me? And what is just like mental stories? Um, so yeah, make sure that you're taking some time alone, slowing down, 
connecting with the breath, connecting with the heart, connecting with animals or nature, um, and letting this intuition and downloads come through. And don't worry if they don't come through straight away. Just know that setting that intention opens up your crown, allows them in, and then over those next few days or weeks, they're going to make more sense to you. All right, Gemini. So thank you guys so much for being here. I'm going to jump into your love, money, and career reading now on part two. So that's on Patreon. And yeah, guys, I just pray that you're surrounded by love until I see you next month. And awesome. See you when you're extended. Bye.